Hey everybody, welcome to Ron's Basement, and I'm glad you're here for my daddy's show. Want to talk about a depression? Nobody talks about depression. Nobody. That's why I'm scared we might actually have a depression. And when you look at all the factors that we've discussed, you does could we be heading? Could we be heading for a depression? I mean, we know because we are, we hang on that guy's every word. The president of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and Bidenomics, or is it Bidenom tricks? I'm not. I don't know. You know, but according to Joe. It's working. Somebody might want to tell Joe that we could. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but are we headed to a depression? Like really hard times? And, and there's a one data point that points possibly, possibly in that, in that direction. Let me just read a couple points to you from here. Hal Turner. I have no idea who Hal Turner is. But he says, U.S. money supply is officially contracting down 3.7%. Do you look at the U.S. debt clock? Okay, that's that website that has all these different debt numbers and there's all these different silver numbers. And by the way, everybody's always up in arms. Why does silver say zero? That's because the silver and gold, the current numbers on the debt clock show the growth in money supply. And this is very important this indicator that's going towards depression zone, it compares changes in the money supply to changes in the amount of silver and gold that are mined. And this indicator right here, money supply is shrinking. It's called M2. Let's put on our thinking caps. M2 money supply. I'm going to touch on this briefly, but John Forrest Little is at the pickaxe. He's on Substack. He's a guy who's been uh, following the precious metal sector for years and years. I've done a couple interviews with him. He's very intelligent. He works with the guys at the uh, Silver Degen Club. But John put out a piece of research that I thought was very interesting about gold. And 25 times, could you, can we, again, right? $45,000 gold, right? I mean, it's, we, we, our minds don't, don't compute that. We think it's crazy. Um, but again, if we look at the returns we had in the 70s and 80s, it's not that far out of the question. But let me tell you in a nutshell how John, and I'll put a link to his work in the description of this video, but he pointed out, well, let me, let me just, here, I'll read it. I'll read a couple little blurbs for you because I don't want to mis misstate anything. 45,000, the 45,000 per ounce level is 25 times greater than that 1,800. It's, uh, it, it's, it's crazy. We'd like to thank our sponsor, First Mining Gold. They're a Canadian gold developer with two world-class projects in Canada. They also have a handful of other projects. When you total up all the gold in their resources, it comes to over 12 million ounces. They're worth checking out. I'll put a link to the company's website in the description below. M2 Money is all the money in the system. Bank accounts, cash, everything, okay? It is shrinking. What does that mean for silver and gold? Well, on the on the debt clock, it means that it shows that silver and gold are at zero because it, the, the amount of money is shrinking in the system. But what does it mean in regards to the fact that we could possibly, do you, can you fathom, be heading towards a depression? Okay, here, quickly, warning. The money supply is officially contracting. This has only happened five times in the previous 150 years. But each time, a depression with double-digit unemployment rates followed. We've only seen the money supply shrink five times in the history of the United States in the last 150 years. But every time the money supply did shrink, we had a depression. In the, in the past 150 years, the U.S. money, okay, here, two money supply metrics that investors pay attention to are M1 and M2. The former, M2, accounts for the cash 
and coins in circulation, as well as the demand deposits within an individual's checking account. Meanwhile, M2 factors in everything in M1 and adds money market accounts, savings accounts, CDs. Uh, the main difference is that M2 factors in cash that takes a little extra work to get your hands on. As far back as the eye can see, M2 has been climbing since the U.S. economy steadily grows over the long run. It's only natural that more cash capital is needed to facilitate transactions. So M2 is always rising, but now, very unusual, we have the money supply shrinking. And, you know, how do you, how do you think about this when you look at the big picture of what's going on in the economy? We've, we've covered all this. The, the 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 freight uh, the freight rates the, the amount of freight being shipped around the country down ten percent on trucks five or ten percent on rail. <clears throat> we just got news from the New York New Jersey Port Authority that their their traffic coming in on these big container ships is down twenty percent. Right? We know. We know. Here's another another horrific, scary situation. Consumed, it says the headline, consumer crashed. Credit card spending cratered in September. You know why credit card spending cratered? Two reasons. People don't have any money left on their credit cards. They've maxed out their credit cards. And those who haven't are shaking in their boots. Okay? And, and, factor all that in. What does it mean that the money supply is shrinking? And we know that every time that's happened in the past, it is a, a preview for a depression to come. I don't know, right? I don't, we, you know, I, I, it could get ugly. I'm not, look, we don't, we're not complete doom and gloom, you know, people here in the basement, but it could get ugly. What would happen to the value of silver and gold, either during a deflationary depression type environment, or or if the Fed free you think the Fed would pivot, right? If we if we start to hit a real recession, I don't know what you call it. Uh, what's a more exaggerated form of pivoting? You know, I I I, I could see Jerome Powell and uh, Janet Yellen. <laughs> they wouldn't just pivot, folks. They'd be doing backflips on CNBC for everybody. <laughs> Janet and Jerome would be at the local trampoline park doing backflips, saying, "Don't worry, guys, we're gonna flip. We're not just pivoting. We're flipping. We're gonna we're gonna pump so much money into this system. Silver and gold are gonna do very, very, very well." Okay. He looks at the total amount of debt in the world right now, just debt. Okay, three hundred and seven trillion dollars. That's the amount of debt in the world. It's crazy, guys. We are in crazy town. What does that mean? Three hundred and seven. If you want to back that up with all of the gold in the world, right? So this this compares the total amount of debt, three hundred and seven trillion. I mean, and, and you want to back that up with all the gold in the world, you're looking at 6.7 billion troy ounces. That brings the price of gold to $45,821, um, making an error to compare the value of gold to all the debt in the world. I don't know. Right. People. Right. Modern monetary people say, oh, that doesn't that that that's your you know, that doesn't make sense. That's not. Well, I don't know. Right. What about, what about that guy who used to work at the Federal Reserve? Remember him? There's a guy who was an economist at the New York Fed for, for decades, I believe, and he didn't die all that long ago. His name was Johnny Exter. And we love Johnny Exter because Johnny was the one guy who told the truth about the monetary system. He argued, I mean, this guy was crazy. Have you heard about him? He had a pyramid, and he turned it upside down, and he said at the bottom of that pyramid, right down there, that little bitty, 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 bitty bit, that was all the gold and silver in the world, and that all that other stuff made up, make believe, you know, right? Make believe. Hello? Make believe. 
I can't show you a bit. Here's a Bitcoin. There, make believe. Oh, here, in my bank account, at my local bank. Here, there's my balance. Right there, see it? Make believe. What about all the derivatives? Right, We're not talking billions. We're not talking 307 billion of debt in the world. No, we're talking quadrillions. We took billion to a whole new level. A thousand billion. A thousand trillion is a quadrillion. We don't even know how many derivatives there are. You hear all kinds of crazy numbers. Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, online bullion dealer. I use them. I did my research on them. I would encourage you to do your research on them as well. To me, trustworthiness, selection, price, they were the best. So if you're out looking for some metal, check out Pimbex. All of that, all of that rests on this little tiny little itty bitty bitty bit of silver and gold. Do you have some of the, what do you think that means? What do you think that means? Right? Because eventually all that made up stuff, right? We, uh, let's look at history. Let's talk about what Lynette, Lynette Zhang, remember Lynette Zhang? That's what my mom said the other day to me was that lady that I interviewed. Very nice lady, very smart lady. What is Lynette Zhang? She's got a stack of all kinds of different paper money that's been created over the years. There's hundreds, thousands of fiat make-believe monies that have come and gone. Because once they're not completely tethered, I love that word, tethered. I hate the word pivot, but I love the word tethered. You have to have your money, at minimum, tethered to gold, like, a, like an anchor on the bottom of the ocean. The boat can float around, right? But it's tethered to that anchor. And I will argue, and you'll say I'm crazy, and, and you know, you're probably 51% right in saying that, but nonetheless, I would argue, I would argue that no matter what they say, no matter, Jerome Powell is the Wizard of Oz. No matter what he throws out there, wonderful stories and all this, you know, blah, blah, blah blah. Silver and gold are still backing everything right now. Most of you probably don't even agree with me on that, but I think and I know, if I look out a hundred years, if I look back a hundred years, if I look out a thousand years, and I can see out there a thousand years from now we are going to be really old, you and I, but if we look back a thousand years, it's always been the case. It always will be the case. It's crazy. It's crazy.